Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a special edition of Renaissance Radio. We have an unusual guest today. He is a gentleman by the name of Robert Smith, who is a black man who is also a race realist. He wrote a remarkable article for American Renaissance called How a Young Black Man Became a Race Realist. That was uh, an article that attracted a great deal of attention, as one might imagine. And he has generously agreed to be interviewed by me for this uh, edition of Radio Renaissance. So, welcome, Mr. Smith. Uh, really very glad to have you on the program here. Thank you for having me. Um, could you tell me, first of all, let's start with a little bit about your, your background. Uh, what was your family like? Uh, what were your... What were the circumstances under which you grew up? Well, I kind of uh, already discussed this in the article, but yes, I was uh, raised in an upper middle class household. Um, two parents, everything provided for me. They did the very best they could to ensure that I was sent to good schools, which tended to be majority white. But the thing is, this, the city that I grew up in is a predominantly black city. So, I mean, it was kind of faded from the outset that I arrive at some unusual views on race because, I mean, in a predominantly black city, but everyone, like all the schools I go to are majority white, all my friends are white for the most part. So, Did your parents encourage you to have friends who are mostly white or did they, was this just something that happened naturally? Well, I mean, I, I guess they did kind of indirectly because they uh, heavily enforced the idea that race did not matter at all. Like they told me that uh, all these things that happened in the past, no one cared about them anymore. So I guess indirectly they did, they, they did uh, sort of encourage me to seek out uh, more white friends. And that would have happened anyway, because uh, most of my classmates were white. So yes. So was your neighborhood uh, largely white as well? Uh uh, no, the, the the neighborhood is um, mostly black. So. I see. So you ended up hanging out more with classmates than with uh, people from the neighborhood. Yes, and the funny thing is when I tried to hang out with kids in the neighborhood, they actually rejected me. So, yes. For what reasons was it that they rejected you, so far as you could tell? Um, well, we just weren't at all, we weren't really compatible, I mean, in the sense of, what in the sense i guess uh well, well now i would say iq difference but i guess uh we were from different socioeconomic classes as well like the uh, children from the neighborhood were more poor they tended to not be as educated and they tended to be more rude as i also mentioned in my article so and uh they uh i i was accused of acting white by people in the neighborhood also what was the sort of behavior that would result in an accusation of being uh, of acting white? Um, well, things. Uh, some of the main things are like having no accent, speaking. Uh, I guess speaking in a speaking standard English, uh, w without any hint of like any uh, any African American accent. Uh, listening to different types of music other than those commonly associated with blackness, um, having a lot of white friends. So. Uh, is it not the case that uh, some black people who speak uh, standard link English, when they're around other black people, then they will try to sound black in order to fit in? Is that not a common thing? Oh, oh yes, that's very common. It's called code switching, I believe. And uh, I... I had actually gotten into the habit of doing that as well because I mean if you're like if if you're around other black people you would want to blend in like you're not you're not um going to going to try to bring attention to yourself so it's natural yeah that's a very uh, common thing code switching so. why do you think that after so many years in the United States, hundreds of years in the United States, there's still a distinctively black accent. Do you have any impressions on that? Is that perhaps because blacks wish to sound different from whites? What would you say? Uh, yes, I would, I would say 
that's uh, that's the main reason why blacks largely self segregate and those those who try to assimilate into the larger society, which tends to be tend to be white, those blacks are uh, actively discouraged from doing this by being ostracized from by other blacks and being accused of um, being an Uncle Tom. And to to a black person, as I also mentioned in my article, like Uncle Tom is like one of the harshest insults you could possibly you could possibly throw at a black person. It's just like the worst thing imaginable. Being um, yes. What would be the common definition? Well, what does it mean to a black person to be called an Uncle Tom? Oh, it means that you basically have no respect for your ancestors. It means you would rather you, you would rather um, align yourself with the same people who enslaved your uh, your race and the same people who who used to think of you as less than human. You would rather you would rather uh, associate with them than build up the black community. So you're a race traitor, basically. Oh, yes. Traitor of the worst kind. And I guess among blacks, being a race traitor, that's basically the, the foulest of all possible insults. Oh, yes, it's worse than even, uh, like even being a murderer. Because, like, uh, as you can, I mean, you could probably tell from, like, the black teen culture, I mean, it's funny because being a criminal actually doesn't harm you that much in terms of popularity with a lot of blacks. I mean, I mean you saw it in the in the OJ case and uh, countless other things, the Black Lives Matter things, uh, where blacks rally for criminals and thugs who destroy their neighborhoods. Being like being a criminal actually doesn't hurt you as much as being an Uncle Tom. Like that's worse than even being a murderer. <laughs> yes, it's remarkable, isn't it? Um, yes. Um, my, my sense is that the, the best-known black person who is most reviled by blacks and called an Uncle Tom would be Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, or is he sort of too far removed to be even much of a concern among blacks? What is your sense of that? I would say that's pretty accurate. I mean, I would say uh, Justice Thomas, along with other prominent black conservatives, they uh, they they get ridiculed a lot in black culture. Like, have you heard of the show The Boondocks? I don't... Yes, yes. Okay, yes. Well, uh, like in certain episodes, I mean, there's this character called uh, Uncle Ruckus, and he's st- he's like a the stereotypical Uncle Tom. And uh, from time to time, other characters come on the show. They're always conservative, uh, have conservative viewpoints, have white wives, things like that. So, yes. Well, how does it, how is it that a, a successful black person who is, say, in the civil rights movement, well, someone like, I suppose, Jesse Jackson or Al Sharpton, they are not Uncle Toms because despite the fact that they are successful, they're rich, they're influential, they're seen as fighting for blacks. So, so long as you do that, then the last thing you are is an Uncle Tom. Yes, that's, uh, that's like, uh, e- exactly correct. Because, like, uh, the moment, basically the moment you uh, start to question the narrative of black victimhood, uh, like the moment you start to uh, suggest that blacks are at least a little responsible for their own failure, that's when you start being put in danger of being called an Uncle Tom. Like uh, uh, Al Sharpton, Jesse Jackson, those, they're viewed as uh, yeah, fighting for their people, like fighting against the evil whites who hold them back. Whereas someone like Ben Carson, he, uh, my, my uncles even talked about him as an Uncle Tom. But uh, yes, someone like Ben Carson who views blacks as partly responsible for their own failure like it's not so much that whites are holding blacks back that's when you start to become an uncle tom right well uh, i described you and you described yourself as a race realist but can you give me a definition of how you understand that term basically all it means is just realize like understanding the science behind it like it's not even so much racial consciousness or any particular policy recommendations because it's possible to be a race realist and 
go anywhere else from there. Like you could be a liberal race realist, you could be a conservative race realist. All it means is to me is just that you understand that um, the races represent population groups of humanity that were separated in the course of their evolution. So, I mean, there will be statistical differences in the populations. Like, that's all it means to me. Right. And I suppose the most controversial difference that people talk about is uh, differences in average IQ. But how was it that you began to believe that uh, differences in ability or differences in achievement really were uh, biologically oriented, had, had, a, had a genetic orientation? Yes, well, as I said, I, uh, I mean, the, the average differences were obvious to me going, having gone to predominantly white schools all my life. I had, I had actually gotten into the habit of assuming that a random black wouldn't be that smart. And I had gotten like a, my city had, uh, been, um, undergoing gentrification. And I, this was in middle school. I actually, uh, like supported the gentrification because I understood that white, like more white people would mean more like a better neighborhood, more services. So the, I mean, the basic pattern was just obvious. And then making the the leap from the difference being there to being genetic, basically I, uh, I mean, I kept researching and I saw that these patterns play themselves out like all over the world, literally like in Brazil, in Central America, in Canada, in Britain, literally everywhere where blacks existed, these same patterns of low educational attainment, high criminality, they were the same thing everywhere. And then uh, I saw, like, uh, at first I used to think the acting white accusation was a major reason why blacks failed, but I saw that was, like, that was universal as well, it seemed like, like all the, uh, like, high achieving intelligent black people had to go through this even in places like Canada and Brazil and Jamaica I mean like literally everywhere so I figured there there had to be something deeper it couldn't just be a coincidence that throughout like different socioeconomic systems different cultures different time periods the, uh, the like everything was the same so so this uh, helped lead you to conclude that this is based in biology and it's not some sort of environmental uh, effect of racism or oppression or anything like that, that this was based in biology. That was uh, the uh, conclusion you eventually reached. Yes, and um, I mean, I was, I'd imagine that most people are aware that uh, there are people who say that blacks have lower IQ on average, but it's really just a matter of like accepting that these people are telling the truth, like they're not just motivated by racism or anything. And uh, I mean, there are some, I guess, environment, like, like if you uh, think about the environmental reasons why a lot of people put forth for black failure, like culture or racism or, um, I don't know, like poverty or lack of Parent, good parents, like those all can be traced back to the uh, basic fact of the genetics. Because I mean, uh, people who aren't intelligent, w would you expect them really to create uh, cultures that value high achievement in education? Or would you expect them to be, would you expect them to um, make a lot of money? No, you wouldn't. So I mean, like it, it, it really all comes back to the, the genetics. Was there a particular aha moment or a particular incident that led you to this conclusion, or was it just a gradual realization? Well, I guess, um, yeah, I mean, if I had to put forth uh, an, like a sort of moment that really changed things for me, it would be just seeing, seeing all those articles when I was researching, seeing how similar things were in in uh in other countries like all over the world so i guess so. that has always seemed to me a very convincing argument as well you can do all the iq studies you like but 
the fact that wherever you find blacks, you find very similar patterns, that in and of itself, entirely aside from any kind of scientific study, it seems to me is a very convincing argument that there is some kind of basic difference. But did, did you, was this uh, a saddening or sobering experience for you? Or uh, what, what was your emotional feeling? What was, uh, how did it make you feel to, to arrive at this conclusion? Oh, yes, it was it was a uh, very saddening and depressing at first because i mean like obviously no one wants to believe that their race is inferior or it's less intelligent i wouldn't use the term inferior but yeah i mean if you admit that your race is genetically less intelligent you admit that the racists that uh the racists of the old days were right you uh open yourself up to all these other sorts of things like maybe segregation wasn't such a bad idea maybe uh, uh, slavery could have possibly been justified like all these other sorts of things so I was depressed for a while once I realized the truth but I mean that uh that I don't think that necessarily follows because if I had been I think that if I had grown up knowing the truth I wouldn't like it, it obviously wouldn't have been such a big deal. Like I would have just, I mean, it, it, it would have just been a, a, a basic fact of nature because I mean, if you look throughout, if you look back at history, when everyone understood these differences, like I've, uh, yeah, like if you look back at history, when everyone understood these differences, blacks were doing much better than they are now, ironically. So. It has always seemed to me to be ultimately a disservice to blacks to constantly be telling them, yeah, you're just as smart and hardworking as white people, but it's those wicked white people who are keeping you down. Uh, I would think that uh, that would result in a sense of anger and fury and a different kind of frustration. It, it results in tensions that can never be resolved. Oh, yes, definitely. I mean, like a... Yeah, like a... Also, as I said in my article, like m maybe admitting racial differences uh, could seem depressing, like like a just just uh, initially. But like really, if you if you think about it, like it's much more depressing to believe that that the whites are constantly like wherever blacks go, they have the power to hold them back some somehow, like a. Black, um, black success or failure depends on white racism, which, to, uh, and there's no end in sight to white racism. Right. So. Well, uh, given this view, uh, say, well, uh, I, I, you're a young man, are you not? You're, you're still in college, is that correct? Uh, yes, I'm in my early 20s. Yes, yeah, still in college. Well, when you have children, uh, do you expect to explain this fact to your children, to have them grow up understanding racial differences? I'm, if I were ever to have children, yes, I would. I mean, it, yeah. <laughs> On the assumption that uh, they're better off knowing the truth uh, and rather than being disappointed at a, different, at, a, at a later age or having unnecessary resentments, that kind of thing? Uh, uh, yes, exactly. Like, if I, if I had a... Uh, grown up knowing what I do now, like my life would have, I mean, I, I feel I would have had a better life if I had known the truth about race because I, uh, like I, I mean, it was just so much unnecessary energy and resentment that I, that, uh, that happened because I didn't understand the truth about race. Like for example, the, uh, acting white accusation, like that was just so frustrating and confusing to me. And I thought that, um, that like whites, when they said that they were intentionally trying to be racist, but no, like th they're just viewing reality as it really is. And I, I would have understood that and I would have just worked hard, yes. Uh, I'm sorry, when whites would accuse you of acting white? Now, wh what would be the motive of whites, do you think, to say that? Is it a way of saying you're not authentically black or is it a compliment coming from whites? I think sometimes um, both, I mean, both could be the case in different situations, but I think to them it was just, I mean, like it, 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 it is undeniable that a high IQ black person does not act like the, um, the average black acts. 
so I mean, we uh, and and blacks, uh, blacks were able to sense this difference in behavior as well. But we just call like we we just call black uh, those of the black underclass. We call them ghetto, like the stereotypical loud, obnoxious, ignorant behavior. But so I guess to non-blacks, that was just how blacks act. And honestly, most black I mean more blacks act like act ghetto so to speak, then act intelligently. So it was just, I mean, it was natural for them to view that as acting black. And then when you find someone who doesn't act like that, like in an, uh, like a highly educated black person, you would call them white or acting white. Like it, it th they weren't even necessarily trying to insult me. It was just, yeah. J just an observation. Yes, exactly. It was just a neutral observation. Like you, um, like you, you don't act like the majority of blacks. And fun, funnily enough, like I also had the thought that that misunderstanding sort of stems from uh, not understanding the racial IQ differences. Because if you understand the IQ differences, you would understand that a high IQ black person would not act like the stereotypical black person because the average black person has an average IQ of 85. So if you understand the racial IQ differences, ironically, you're less likely to call a, um, a, an intelligent black person acting white because you would understand that's just how an intelligent person acts. So. Right. Well, uh, when you uh, have you described uh, this sort of thing or your observations about this uh, to your friends or your family, to blacks, to whites, uh, how do they react when, when you bring up this subject that is considered so reprehensible and horrible? Well, I haven't, um, I haven't told that many people I generally keep to myself, although, I mean, I might in the future be more open about it, but... The few people I have told, well, um, like I, I told my friend from high school, he's he's uh, Asian and he's like he's uh, kind of like the stereotypical social justice warrior, and he he said he was appalled by my I, I actually showed him my article. He said he was appalled, and he said uh, I mean he he didn't accept the truth and he just kept saying how we should uh, we shouldn't give up on. Uh, blacks and we should try to help them but what he doesn't understand is that race realism doesn't like accepting the truth about racial differences doesn't mean that you stop helping people it just means if you want to help them you have to take genetics into account and that goes back to what we were saying yeah yes uh i will never forget uh a very surprising conversation I had with a liberal woman. This was many years ago when I was living in California, and we got into this conversation about racial differences in intelligence. She was very strongly arguing that that just couldn't be so, that couldn't be so, and I made some of the more obvious arguments uh, marshalling the evidence for the fact that it is so and that it is genetic. And she said, well, well, if that's the case, we'll just have to exterminate them all. And I thought, whoa, wait a minute. Absolutely not. Where did that come from? That just a completely crazy notion. Uh, I, I often ask myself, why is it that whites resist uh, a drawing the obvious conclusion of everything that they see around them? And I don't have a good answer for that. Ordinarily, people are happy to consider themselves in some way better than another group. I mean, if you go to a school and the rival school, you, you consider yourself better. Uh, uh, you like to think that your club is better than the other club. It's sort of a natural human thing, whether or not there's any evidence for it, all, or for it at all. But whites have this ferocious resistance to arriving at a conclusion about racial differences between blacks and whites. And, and I thought to myself... Perhaps it's this completely illogical reaction of this liberal that makes them sometimes resist coming to this conclusion. But that doesn't follow at all. It's exactly as you said. Just because you understand that there are differences between races doesn't mean that you give up on people. It's just you take that into consideration. Right, exactly. And, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I mean, like, also there's probably... Like you said, like you've said before, like whites just seem to be inherently like altruistic. 
that there's just something about whites that makes them not want to just uh, like like just accept the fact that like you said Africa is always going to be poor. There's always going to be ghettos and achievement gaps and things like that. But I mean, you have to like I I think you you have to make it clear that what's been what they've been trying like hasn't been working at all and it's just been making things worse. So if you want to help, then this would be the way to help. <laughs> so. Do you have uh, any hope that anytime soon a, a race realist view of uh, racial differences is likely to become common? I honestly don't see it becoming common in the near future. Maybe like the only thing I could see uh, is that like at some point people will have to accept the differences um, because we're constantly like once we find the genes for intelligence, like they'll have no choice then I would think. But... My fear of course is that uh, even if they do isolate uh, the genes that affect intelligence and even if they do determine that they're not equally distributed among different races, that news will be very carefully suppressed. I mean, after all, there's already a lot of evidence. I mean, if you poke around, you can find uh, uh, not just uh, descriptive evidence of black and white uh, differences uh, that are patterns that you find all over the world and throughout history, but also very careful uh, studies, some of them genetic, uh, many of them uh, psychometric. All of that's there. It's just that nobody dares talk about it. Yes, well, I mean, I guess... Also, um, like you have, I mean, like at, at first I was, I was uh, confused as to why, like what the purpose of discussing this was also. Like I, I actually used to regard like American Renaissance and people who discuss these things as evil and racist because I didn't understand why they were discussing it. I mean, like for most people, if you like bring up the uh, fact that blacks are less intelligent, like... A lot of people will just be like, so what? Like, what, what does this mean? What are the implications of this? So, I mean, like, yeah. Well, then let me ask you uh, what may be a difficult question. Uh, for white people who understand this, what should the implications be? Or for black people, for that matter. If this were completely well known, if this were accepted, widely accepted, that there's this 15 point difference, Average black IQ is 85, uh, and therefore there's a certain amount of overlap, but we're looking at pretty radically different populations. What are the implications? What, what, how should society take this into consideration? Well, I, I, I think, I mean, I honestly don't see society in general just saying, like, if presented with this information, I don't see them saying, well, okay, I mean, we should separate, we should have we should just give up on Africa or give up on uh, on blacks trying to make things better. Because as I said, like whites seem to have this inherent, this inherent, uh, this inherent need for equality or this want, this yearning for equality and progress. So, I mean, I, I think if this, uh, the implications, like what will happen as you've, you've predicted in a, and in, in an American Renaissance article, I believe, like uh, people will try to, I guess, uh, e equalize the genes for intelligence or uh, in some way, uh, like in some way, uh, improve things using the knowledge of genetics. That's certainly possible. Uh, sometimes it seems that, as you say, whites are so altruistic and uh, in academic circles, for example, they are so devoted to this idea of diversity and equal representation that it wouldn't matter to them if it had been demonstrated that there were uh, genetic racial differences. They would still practice affirmative action. They would still do all the things they're doing today. I think that's not entirely out of the question, given the goofiness of white people. Yes, I mean, I, I see what you mean, and... Uh... I mean, like, it, it seems that at some point they're going to have to accept the truth. I mean, like, just uh, looking at, like, just looking at the statistics and all the things that have been tried, if someone came along 
with uh with the idea of equality in mind and helping these people in mind i think that i don't know like i i think that a good number of uh, people who want equality like those on the left maybe they could be red pilled into a form of liberal race realism we'd like to think think so wouldn't we but oh, yes uh, <laughs> yes well uh, in conclusion, uh, can you tell me what your plans are for uh, a career, uh, what you're studying now, uh, what you'd like to make of your life, and whether or not uh, this clear understanding of race realism is likely to have any impact on your career choice or how you lead your life? Um, well, I'm currently studying computer science. It doesn't have anything to do with this, but yes. Uh, I've also, I mean, I've thought of... Uh, perhaps writing a book about race realism or doing something with that in the future. Well, uh, I certainly uh, salute your willingness to grapple with uh, this difficult subject. Uh, and I, I'm glad that in your view, this is something that should be widely known. And now I, I gather you understand why it is that groups like American Renaissance are inclined to make this truth well known rather than try to hide it and cover up the way most of American society does. Yes, as, as you said before, this is one of my favorite quotes of all time, but um, you said it in your video in, in, uh, in an American Renaissance conference. R reality has a way of intruding no matter how disagreeable. So, <laughs> yes, um, and let's hope that uh, reality does intrude, and uh, let's hope that in some way you will help it intrude. I think that uh, it, it's unquestionably the case, as, as you seemed to react before you arrived at these conclusions yourself, when you see white people talking about racial differences in IQ, it's easy to assume that somehow they are malevolent. They're doing this for utterly unscientific and uh, really hateful reasons. But if a black person were to talk about race differences in IQ, of course, uh, he would be vilified as the worst possible Uncle Tom under the sun. But at least, do you not think that more white people would give such a person a receptive hearing? Oh, yes, that's definitely, that's definitely the case. Like, I, uh, my, uh, I have a friend also in Mensa who, uh, who, who uh, is really into race realism, and he's tried in the past to bring it up at conferences, but they always, uh, they always deny him. And he, he saw my article, and then he knew it was me, so he's really trying to get me to join him and uh, speak at, at a convention, because that, I, I'd imagine that like many whites would be just bamboozled by that idea <laughs> of a black race realist. And, no. and, and it's, it's funny because, I mean, like, like if blacks, black liberation and prosperous Africa and a prosperous Haiti and prosperous black country, that, that can only be accomplished once you accept the genetics. I mean, like, yeah. Is this friend a black friend in Mensa or a white friend? Uh, he's, he's white. I see. So his view is that, yes, you, you could completely buffalo and bamboozle these people if you showed up and talked about these things, whereas he gets shouted down. Is that the problem? Yes, this, this, yeah, this is definitely the case. And it's funny because like, on a, like, I see his Facebook activity, and people are just so, like, so ignorant on what he really even wants, like what he believes. So, okay, his, his basic... Uh, his basic goal is to spread knowledge of racial differences so that for the purpose uh, of like e e for th for the purpose of equalizing intelligence levels among the different races so he he's trying to do like the ultimate good from a leftist perspective to equalize intelligence levels but on the forum he just gets like he just gets vilified he got banned like he gets uh, he got banned from a group and people call him a white nationalist and a white supremacist like they don't understand that just talking about this doesn't automatically mean that you're, you support Hitler or anything like that. Well, you say he wants to equalize intelligence between the races. Is he talking about some sort of a eugenic program for, uh, for different groups? Oh, he's, he's talking about um, making use of genetic engineering like CRISPR. Yeah. 
I see, I see. Well, of course, it's, if CRISPR can be used to raise the IQs of blacks, uh, it could presumably be used to raise the IQ of whites. Uh, wouldn't it take some kind of uh, rather authoritative, uh, almost tyrannical government to say, well, okay, you can use it to raise the IQ of blacks, but not of whites? Is that what he proposes? Yes, he, he proposes that we, I mean, like if, if, current, if current trends continue, um, Genetic engineering will be outlawed, but uh, but the rich will still use it for to enhance their children. And these rich people will tend to be whites, Asians, and Jews. So ironically, um, like the bell curves, racial bell curves will be f spread further apart if the current trends continue. But what he proposes doing is have the state subsidize it, and uh, for the express purpose of equalizing. Uh, Racial, well, yes, racial there's your typical levels. white reaction, isn't it? Uh, this yearning for equality, even after you have arrived at a scientific conclusion about race. But I mean, also, like it's not like uh, what what he proposes doing. I think has uh, has a higher chance of just being accepted by most whites, uh, by most people in general, but especially whites. I mean, because it's very like. It's, it's an altruistic reaction to the racial differences. Like, w if most people were, were presented with this, don't you think that, uh, like, this would be more accepted than just having, like, just letting blacks be? Or what? Gosh, uh, given the the craziness of which whites are capable, and uh, as you say, this astonishing altruistic streak they have, uh, yes, that might very well be a widespread reaction. I suppose if you did a poll of white people, uh, certainly of college-educated white people, and you asked them, well, okay, say it's established that racial differences are biological, but that it is possible by CRISPR or some other mechanism to bring the average black up to the average level of whites. Uh, should government do that so as to equalize the races? You know, I suspect that a majority, certainly, of college-educated whites would say, yes, yes, that's what government should do. Well, in any case, uh, uh, I very much appreciate your willingness to talk about this. And I gather, at, at this point in your life, rather than making you angry or sad, the realization of differences is, a, is liberating in a, in a way, is it not? Uh, yes, it was very liberating. I no longer have to worry about this impenetrable wall of white racism holding me back. I no longer have to think, uh, look back at history and just be filled with rage and resentment like I used to, because I know that blacks, I mean, uh, like blacks are much better from a, from the standpoint of having all this technology and development that would never have occurred otherwise. So, yeah. Well, good. Well, let's, uh, let's end on that uplifting note, and uh, I hope that in some way you can contribute to the spread of this kind of wisdom that I think many people are afraid of, but what would be in many respects liberating. So, uh, thank you very much for being uh, on this podcast, and uh, best wishes in all of your future endeavors. Same to you. Thank you so much for having me on your program.